Hey, what's up YouTube? Welcome to another video by Ratchet 10 Wrenches and today I got another tiny bow replacement this time on this 2003 very good looking Kia Spectra. Uh, it's got a 1.8 liter uh, dual Harvard cam engine and uh, you know I know I've been doing a lot of these but these videos seem to be the more popular videos I put up so and they are kind of important because if you know do it yourself or, and you're you know you haven't done uh, you know timing bow replacements or you only done one or two uh, and, and not on a particular car that you're planning to do it on it's important to get everything you know right on all the alignments uh, you know alignment marks line up correctly get the tension right because uh, if you don't, you're gonna ruin your engine. The timing bolt breaks, and you know pistons hit the valves. And something to be said about these Kias on the smaller Kia engines, the 1.6 liter. I ran across two of them that when the belt broke, the valves also broke, and then they ruined the entire engine. And usually, when the timing bolt breaks, about 80 to 90 percent of the time, only the valves bent, and you can get away with just doing your valve job on that engine. But on these Kias, it seems, especially the ones with the smaller engines, that uh, if your timing bolt breaks, you're done for. You have to get a new, a different engine to put in your car. Okay, uh, that said, uh, here's how this is done. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to disconnect the negative side of the battery. I'm, so what I'm gonna do, try to do first is to remove our drive belts. This power steering pump drive belt is held in place by, well actually the tensioning mechanism is, uh, re requires you to loosen that locking nut. And then you turn that tensioning bolt counterclockwise until you get enough tension in this power steering pump belt to remove it, okay? Okay, actually before you deal with the tensioning mechanism, you need to loosen that, uh, that mounting bolt for your power steering pump. Okay. okay, I need to access that through your power steering pump pulley and you need the right extension to it. I got the three, eight, six, three uh, inch extension on here. And then you go around this uh, AC line and then you just loosen it a couple of turns and that's good enough. Okay, this locking nut is gonna be a 14 millimeter and you need a wrench for this. Okay, next you turn this uh, 12 millimeter uh, tensioning bolt counterclockwise until there's, a, there's plenty of slack in the belt that you can just uh, remove it, okay? Okay, you know, I don't know why this isn't going down enough that to be enough slack in this, so I'm just gonna remove this uh, tensioning mechanism. I already removed the locking nut the 14 millimeter nut. Now I'm just uh, twisting out the, the 12 millimeter uh, tightening bolt. All right, here's the bolt. I'm gonna get the other half of this mechanism, which is this guy. Now we can push this uh, power steering pump down all the way and remove our belt. Okay, and here's a look at the tension mechanism that we took out. I'll show you how to put it back on, but basically uh, this is how you put it back on and how it works. It goes through the bracket for the power steering pump this is the locking bolt, this is the locking nut, and then this goes from the top, this goes in, as you screw it in, <coughs> you're, uh, you're pulling on the power steering pump, therefore making the belt tighter. As you screw it out, you can push it down and make, uh, make more slack, and when you got the right amount of slack, you just lock it in by tightening this nut and uh, locking everything in, okay? Okay, next we're gonna remove this uh, water pump and alternator bolts, but first we're gonna loosen these three 10 millimeter bolts that hold this pulley in, because if we don't loosen them now and uh, remove our belt, when we go to loosen this, these, uh, it's just gonna turn the power, uh, turn the pulley and not loosen them, okay? And you don't have to remove them, just loosen them. Okay, next we're gonna remove our alternator and water pump belt, and it's gonna be the same way. There's a tensioning mechanism. Basically, loosen that and unscrew that to create more tension. And uh, the bolt that's on the alternator attaches the alternator to the engine, and which the alternator pivots on that we would probably need to loosen is gonna be facing inward. So you might have to reach back there. But first, I'm gonna loosen this and try to see if I can just push this up to, to create more space, and then. When it's time to put it back on, maybe we can just push it back in. We'll see. Okay, this locking bolt is a 12 millimeter. This tensioning bolt is also another 12 millimeter. Okay, now I'm just gonna push this up, see if we can just push the alternator back. You know, I think if we can just manage it to push this alternator back a little bit, like I did, we should have enough slack to get this belt out. Okay, now I'm gonna try to get it off the water pump fully. Yep, and indeed we do we have actually plenty of slack. Okay, what we're gonna do next is just to take out these bolts for the water pump pulley that we loosened earlier and then remove our water pump pulley. 
There we go. Okay, next we're gonna remove that uh, passenger side motor mount by first raising the right side and supporting that on jack stand. Then uh, getting underneath and using our jack to raise and support the engine, okay? You should go without saying, but make sure before you do this, you've uh, applied your emergency parking brakes and make sure the transmission is in gear or in park if you have an automatic, okay? You want to get a piece of 2x4 between your jack and your engine oil pan to spread the, the, the pressure, but uh, I don't have one, so this uh, wooden handle on my hammer is going to do. And you just want to support it, you don't want to raise up the car with this. So you just want to go, you know, maybe half an inch, and after you feel it engage, just half an inch, and that's it. Okay, next you want to remove these two nuts, and they're going to require a 17 millimeter deep socket, okay? Okay, next we remove this 17 millimeter bolt and then we should be able to get our uh, motor mount out of here. Alright, let's see. Well, there's a couple of washers here, so make sure you don't lose those. Okay, you know what actually, we're going to remove this uh, power steering fluid reservoir. It's, all, it's only held in by one 10 millimeter bolt. And it's going to make life a lot easier for getting this uh, motor mount out, okay? There we go. Okay, next we're going to remove this upper timing belt cover, which is held in by two bolts on this side and then two on this side. These two bolts also hold this bracket, that's for your upper t engine cover. And this lower bol bolt on this side attaches to your oil dipstick tube, okay? And these two lower bolts are shorter than the upper ones, okay? And here it comes our upper timing belt cover. Okay, next we remove our right front wheel. Okay, next we need to remove this splash shield which is held in usually by three plastic screws. We're missing two, so we're just gonna take out this middle one and remove this splash shield. There we go. Now we just push this down and tuck it underneath for now. Should be good. Okay, what we need to do next is to set up our engine to top the center by turning our crankshaft clockwise and lining up the marks on our camshaft gears. Uh, there's going to be two marks on each camshaft gear and you want to line up the, the letter that says this is the exhaust side. So you want to mark line up the where it says E and that notch that's right by it. And you want to bring that up and line it up with this uh, pointer that's on your uh, valve cover. And same thing on this side. This is the intake side so we want to line up where the eye is, the notch by what the, where the eye is, and line that up with the, uh, this uh, this pointer that's on a valve co valve cover. Okay. Okay. Before we uh, turn our crankshaft to line up our marks, we're gonna loosen these four bolts uh, that hold our harmonic balancer in. This way, we don't have to do it afterwards because if we do it afterwards, then it requires force. So you're gonna get our uh, timing marks are gonna move, and then we would have to do it all over again. Okay. Okay, and you will need a 21 millimeter socket for this crankshaft bolt and to turn this, okay? All right, it looks top dead center to me. Okay, and there are marks on your harmonic balancer that will line up with the T, with the markings on your uh, lower timing belt cover. And uh, that will also indicate that you're at top dead center. But the uh, most important marks are going to be on your camshaft gears. You want to make sure you line those up correctly. Okay, so now we can just unscrew these four little bolts by hand and take out our harmonic balancer, okay? There's the last one. Now... Alright, hopefully we can wiggle this past these AC lines. go. Also take out this metal cover that's right behind it. Okay next it's time to remove our uh, lower timing bolt cover. Uh, on the bottom it looks like it's held in by these two bolts. Uh, it's probably held in by another two, two on top. Okay. Okay actually up, up top I think it's only held in by one bolt so and that's gonna be it right by our, our power steering pump. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Okay, right before I was gonna say how easy it is to be doing this timing belt job on this car, 
<laughs> it looks like we're gonna have to remove that bracket for our motor mount which is held in by uh, I think uh, three or four bolts there's two here and there's another one further on top that guy and these are all three 17 millimeter bolts then there's another bolt that attaches to the bracket for the uh, tension mechanism for our alternator and that's a 14 millimeter bolt so we're gonna remove these four and take out that uh, motor mount bracket okay there we go there's one and here's the one that's up top. Okay, right down, down there is a bolt that goes to your alternator bracket that you'll need to remove if you want to remove that uh, uh, motor mount bracket, okay? There we go. Okay, here comes our motor mount bracket. It's easier to get it out from the top. Also, if you're watching this, you should remove your motor mount bracket first, then remove your lower time belt cover, okay? There's our motor mount bracket and Here's our uh, lower timing belt cover. Okay, and here's a look at the motor mount bracket outside of the car. These are the three 17 millimeter, millimeter bolts that we removed, and this is the one for your alternator bracket that's a 14 millimeter, okay? Your lower timing belt cover is gonna come with this uh, rubber seal around the circumference. Make sure you don't lose that, and if it's dirty, go ahead and clean it up. And uh, if it's broken, go ahead and replace it, because that, that keeps, uh, you know, dirt and debris from your timing belt. Also, if it's missing, it's gonna create a buzzing noise that's gonna be really annoying and it's gonna drive someone crazy trying to diagnose it at some point, probably. So make sure that's there, okay? 